just under three weeks ago now, my beloved Portsmouth sacked the Cowley brothers after an abysmal run of no league wins in three and a half months. Well, today I'm going to use FN23 to introduce our new gaffer and take a look at how things may pan out in this new era at Fratton Park. This could get interesting, guys, so let's get it started. Hello everybody and welcome to today's video in which I'm going to do a little experiment to give my fellow Pompey fans some idea of how this new era might look under the leadership of our new boss. Now we had a long agonising two and a half week wait for any appointment which led to large sections of the Fratton faithful becoming increasingly frustrated. But on Friday morning the announcement was made and we were all left scratching our heads a little bit and scrambling for Google to find out who this guy was because our new head coach is Oxford United centre-half and first-team coach John Matino. Now, John is also the chair of the PFA, but it has left a lot of Pompey fans feeling a little underwhelmed because this is his first managerial appointment. But he has been working closely with Carl Robinson and the coaching set-up at Oxford United, whilst also studying for his Continental A licence, which he has now acquired. And he has also been training all of Oxford's set-pieces and if you look at the stats, they are up there with the best in League One this season. So it's an interesting appointment. It could be a hidden gem. If you look at some of the managers in League One at the minute, Kieran McKenna, Stephen Schumacher, both flying in League One. They are also rookie managers. But as he is still registered as a player here at Oxford, we can't see his coaching attributes. So I'm going to use the in-game editor now to make him head coach at Pompey, where we can take a look at what he brings to the table as a head coach. So John Musino is now Portsmouth manager and you can see he has a one and a half star reputation and a fairly professional personality. Now his coaching attributes he has seven in attacking, eleven defending, three in fitness, eleven in mental, seven in tactical, eight in technical and eleven with working with youngsters. We're not going to look at his coach attributes for goalkeeping. He isn't a goalkeeper coach so they're not really important. His mental attributes, he has 13s in adaptability, determination and level of discipline, 12 in motivating and 9 in people management. And his knowledge, he has 7 in judging player ability, 8 in judging pot player potential, 7 in judging staff ability, 3 in negotiating and 8 in tactical knowledge. But being the head coach, he will be working under the sporting director here at Pompey, Richard Hughes. So that poor negotiation skill shouldn't really matter within this job role. Now we've seen what John Messino looks like as a head coach. It is time to start the experiment. But before we do, it is quickly worth noting that I have also used the in-game editor to give him the squad he inherited at the time of his appointment. As in real life, we've had a couple of players recalled from loan and a couple joined the club during this January transfer window. But now I'm going to holiday ahead three seasons into the future, stopping at the end of each to see how John Messino performs in his new job. Here we are at the end of season one, and we can see that John Messino has enhanced his reputation. That is now up to two and a half stars, and he has also improved himself as a manager. So looking at his coaching attributes, he has shown growth in attacking and tactical. In his mental attributes, he has shown growth in motivating, and in his knowledge, he has shown growth in his judging player potential and his tactical knowledge. But the big question here is, has he got Pompey performing better than the eighth place the media predicted them to finish at the start of the season? And the answer to that one is a resounding yes. He led Pompey to the League One title by eight clear points. They won 27 out of their 46 games, drawing eight and losing 11. They scored 53 goals while only conceding 36 leaving them with an overall goal difference of plus 17 as they finish the season League One champions. And looking at the overall team stats for League One this season, Pompey were top of the possession charts with 55% possession, and they also topped the most points per game, winning 1.93 points per game over the course of the total winning season. But let's go and have a look at how the squad performed, who were the top scorers, who got the most assists, and who got the best average rating as Pompey claimed the League One title. Starting off with goals, and the leading goal scorer for Pompey this season was Colby Bishop with 19 goals. Close behind him, though, was Dane Scarlett with 13. Ronan Curtis and Michael Jacobs got five apiece, 
Owen Dale and Joe Morrell got four goals. Joe Rafferty and Marlon Pack got three. Rico Hackett and Joe Piggott got two. And Clark Robertson, Tom Lowry, Jay Mingy, Connor Ogilvy, Ryan Tunnicliffe, Kieran Freeman and Michael Morrison all scored a single goal this season. It was the midfield that got most of the assists for Pompey this season with Tom Lowry getting 12, Joe Morrell getting 9 and Ronan Curtis getting 5. And finally Pompey's top 3 performers over the course of the season was Kieran Freeman with an average rating of 7.26, Ronan Curtis with an average rating of 7.05 and Tom Lowry with an average rating of 7.02. So a great first season in charge from Messino securing championship football next season. So now we are going to holiday to the end of season two and see if he can survive in the championship. It's the end of season two and John Messino is now studying for his continental pro license. And again, we have seen him improve as a manager, starting with his coaching attributes. He has shown growth in attacking, mental, tactical and technical in his mental attributes he has shown growth in motivating and people management and in his knowledge he has improved his judging player ability judging player potential judging staff ability and negotiating but how have Pompey performed in their first season in the championship after John Messino got them promoted last season have they stayed up or have they gone straight back down? Let's go and have a look at the table where we will find out. Not only did John Messino and his Pompey squad manage to avoid relegation from the championship in their maiden season, they finished a respectable 16th place. Out of the 46 games they played, they won 14, drew 14 and lost 18. They scored 45 goals and conceded 50, giving them an overall goal difference of minus 5 as they finished the season on 56 points. So looking at the overall team stats for this season, and there is no mention of Pompey, as unfortunately it is dominated by this season's champions, who just happen to be our bitter rival, Southampton. So before we look at how the squad performed this season, let's go and see how Pompey fared in the two South Coast derbies they faced this season. So the first derby of the season saw Southampton visit Fratton Park, and it was Pompey who opened the scoring, but they eventually went on to lose the game 2-1. And in the return fixture at St Mary's, it was Southampton who took the lead early on. They then had a player sent off before doubling their lead, and Pompey pulled a late consolation goal back, again losing that game 2-1, so they didn't win a single derby they faced this season. Champion Southampton beating us both times. So now we look at how the squad performed over the course of the season, starting with goals, and it was new signing Callum Morton who topped the goal scoring charts at the club with 16 goals in his first season at the club. Joe Morrell was second with seven goals, and Ronan Curtis and Tom Lowry got, both got five goals apiece. On to assists now, and it was Ronan Curtis who created the most goals this season with six assists. Paddy Gordon got four as did Tom Lowry and Joe Rafferty and Marlon Pack. And finally, the best three performers at the club this season were KD Gordon with an average rating of 6.98, Ronan Curtis with an average rating of 6.96, and Tom Lowry with an average rating of 6.92. So a solid start to life in the championship for John Martino and his Pompey side. So for the final time now, let's holiday to the end of season three, where we'll see if they can improve on that 16th place finish. We have reached the end of the third and final season of this experiment and John Martino has now qualified for his Continental Pro Licence and he has again showed vast improvement in his management skills. Starting with his coaching attributes, he has shown improvement in attacking, defending, fitness, tactical and technical. In his mental attributes, he has shown growth in motivating and people management and with his knowledge, he has improved his judging player ability judging player potential and his tactical knowledge. But have Pompey improved on that 16th place finish from their first season in the championship? Let's go and look at the table and find out exactly how they've done. So it wasn't to be for Pompey this season, suffering the second season curse as they finished 22nd. Out of the 46 games they played, they only won eight. They drew 18 and lost 20. They scored 37 goals, but conceded 64 finishing with a minus 27 goal difference on 42 points. Four points from safety as they were relegated back to League One. And it comes as no surprise to see that, again, there is no mention of Pompey in the overall team stats. I mean, how many relegated teams usually top any of the charts? 
So let's go straight and see how the squad performed as the team suffered relegation this season. So again, starting with the goals, it was Callum Morton who led the way this season, scoring 10 times. Sonny Perkins found the net eight times and Joe Morrell scored five. It was Sonny Perkins who led the way in terms of assists this season, creating five goals. Tom Lowry got four assists and Ronan Curtis and Joe Morrell got three assists each. And finally, the best three performing Pompey players in this relegation season were Connor Ogilvie with an average rating of 7.07, .07, Zach Swanson with an average rating of 6.94, and Sonny Perkins with an average rating of 6.90. So a disappointing third season as Pompey are heading back to League One. But they have, however, kept faith with John Messino as they see him as the man to lead them straight back up. There we have it, guys. We have simulated the first three years of the John Matino era at Fratton Park. And I'm afraid, Pompey fans, it looks like we're in for one hell of a roller coaster ride. I mean, we've had promotion, survival, and relegation all in the one experiment. So I don't know what more you can ask for in terms of highs and lows. But I am afraid that is it for today's experiment. But keep your eyes on the channel because later today we have the latest episode in my Let's Play series, Hometown Glory where I am trying to get my beloved Portsmouth out of League One. We are still in the mix, but it is very tight at the top. That releases at 2 o'clock, so to make sure you don't miss that, subscribe to the channel and hit that little notification bell. But before you do any of that, please leave a big thumbs up on today's video. Until this afternoon, take care. I hope you have a cracking morning. Bye-bye.